Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about how to play Lars in Tekken 8. This is going to be my starter guide on the character, similar to the one I did on Elisa recently. We won't have time to talk about everything in this video, but I think it will be a very good starting point for you if you're interested in playing this character in this game. If you have played Lars in the past, I think you should come back to him in this game because some of the changes are really quite meaningful and patch up some of his uh, weaknesses, making him more satisfying to play all around and if you are new to the franchise this might actually be my number one pick for like a beginner slash starter character uh, and when i say that just be aware that it, it doesn't mean that you won't be playing him when you eventually become very advanced um, it's just he has low barriers of execution he teaches you how to play the game in general how to mix how to move he doesn't teach you bad habits but you can still enjoy him and be very uh, successful at a high level of play I think this, by the way, is going to be my first ever video uploaded in full HD. I'm making a lot of videos right now, so I decided to fork out some cash and upgrade my video editing software. Hopefully that shows and hopefully you enjoy it. Now, it might seem like a strange starting point for a character guide, but we should talk a little bit about Lars's reputation. Because if you look up information on this character, you're going to see this meme, hashtag buff Lars. Just be aware that half of those buff Larses are sarcastic and half aren't, which is interesting. Because in Tekken 6 and Tag 2, this was a very, very strong character who could do basically everything. It was the perfect tag partner for anybody in Tag 2. And then in Tekken 7, he came out and was really quite weak. And people genuinely wanted uh, them to buff Lars. They did throughout the lifespan of Tekken 7, but they never managed to do it in a way where he could now keep up with the really high tiers. Um, but in this uh, version, Tekken 8, I think the changes that they have given him are sort of the changes that were required in a big way. And so it's a much better sort of all around uh, character at this point. He's got uh, average to like above average movement in my opinion, and uh, he is good at basically everything. Um, but he has a sort of soft specialization in block punishment, and then he has some of the longest and most powerful combos of any char uh, character in the game. He's like a big combo guy, right? Um, I think before we do anything else, we should talk about your sort of standard neutral moves with Lars that you do when you're just, you know, moving around, uh, trying to make stuff happen, you know. It doesn't happen that much in Tekken 8 anymore. Usually when you're, you're not doing anything, it means that your opponent is spamming hard in your face and you're just trying to survive. But, you know, um, I think things are going to calm down as the weeks go by. So for Lars, you have a 1-2. Your standard one jab is decent and you're going to use it a lot to, you know, set up stuff. You might know this by now, but one jabs in Tekken are plus on a hit and block. Um, so they're a good little um, tool to, like, start offense and set things up with. Um, the one two as well as a little sort of keep out tool and stuff. You have a down forward one. It's uh, very decent. It's 13 frames as it should be, plus five on hit, minus one on block, which is good because you do have like 10 frame counter hits with Lars in this game. So a little bit of advantage goes a long way with him or a little bit of disadvantage. Basically uh, an ambiguous situation for the opponent where they might swing. Um, so that's cool. The downfall of the down forward one really is that it doesn't connect to anything else and isn't part of any sort of string. So he can't, you know, do a lot of the classic Tekken 8 spammy offense with this. Um, it has a little bit of high crush. It's not consistent enough that you can rely on it, but sometimes he just ducks under things and you get a free hit, which is pretty cool when it happens, I guess. Um, apart from that, it's really quite limited because Lars is like, he has most of his good moves locked into stances. Uh, and so we're going to talk about many, many more moves once we get to stances, right? But you have uh, back four as your sort of standard mid counter hit tool, safe on block, 15 frames to impact, which is standard. You don't get a full combo when it connects. He just strangles you, which is really fun. It's like one of the most fun moves to hit with in the game. Lars is good at that. He has like some deeply satisfying moves to connect with. Some of the best in the game. Um, so it's good because it's a big chunk of damage and you don't even have to do a combo. But you miss that opportunity of like carrying to the wall, positioning advantage wall combo and all the rest of it. But it's like your main mid counter hit tool for the character. So it's important to keep in mind. 
uh, one 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 is like a three hit string. It's uh, minus twelve, but if you counter hit with this, it becomes natural and a heat engager. So it's a very important get off me tool for Lars that allows him to start things, and they have to be careful about trying to rush him down too hard. He only needs you know a ten frame window to really um, start doing some damage back to you. So that's really quite good. He has uh, two important strong homing moves. Back one is the sort of classic. This is long range, mid, and safe on block, so really quite strong. It doesn't do anything really on counter hit uh, in this game. So it's just there to catch people who are stepping. It's good at the end of the round. I also like to apply it sort of as a get off me tool because it has good range. But at the end of the round, it's just strong because you can sort of stay out of the range of, for example, their down jabs and down forward ones, and then sort of hit them with this when you only need one hit. So. It's a, a cool little move. The other one is back one plus two. They tried to give this move a niche in seven by making it an unsafe on block counter hit launcher. And as soon as we saw that, we knew that it wasn't going to work because I mean, it just obviously wasn't. Um, now they made it safe on block, which is just so much better. It doesn't do anything on counter hit anymore, but it has massive crush properties. Uh, it really goes down quite low you get a big chunk of damage and it's homing. So one area of application for this, for example, is I played against a Yoshi yesterday who liked to do the Yoshi spin, where he spins away and tries to bait you uh, at the start of the round or certain situations on block. And I would just do this and it would chase him down and catch him every time. So it's, it's good for stuff like that. So decent uh, little homing moves, some very average pokes, uh, an average counter hit tool. For gap closers, you have two classic tools with Lars. You can do slash kicks, uh, which is, you know, while running three. Um, it's not remarkable, really, for a slash kick, only that it's kind of one of the few opportunities Lars uh, has had to create a lot of pressure and plus frames on block. Um, it's better in this game because they made while running easier to do. So you just tap forward three times in a row quickly and then press the three button. And then the other one that he has, and one of his most powerful moves overall, like a, a real star in his move list, is the forward forward one plus two. So the reason this is so good, I can just show you the fact that the combo it does is ridiculously powerful, like 83 damage. But this is a, a safe on block mid. Uh, it's got high crush properties, it closes the gap, nice. It's good for Oki, you can counter hit get up kicks with it. It's just very, very good. It's one downfall being that it is vulnerable to sidestep, I think specifically right still. So when you do it too much, your opponent knows and they start stepping it. Um, so you just have to be uh, applying it when you should, but if you do, it's very low risk, but also extremely high reward when you get that counter hit. It's like a very good counter hit launcher. So that's awesome. And that's kind of it for Lars outside of uh, stances, really. He has a couple of sort of situational uh, moves. This down two is kind of decent, you know. Um, but but there you go, basically. Um, and now I guess we should um, talk about his stances. Then I'm going to show you combos. And then we have to talk about his heat and his punishment as well. So for Lars, you have three stances. You used to have two, but they've added a new one in this game. So now you have three might sound like a lot and a bit of uh, like a little bit intimidating, but it's actually very intuitive and not that difficult to understand. So let's go through it. The first stance is dynamic. Traditionally the weakest one. It's not the weakest one anymore. This stance is a monster now. But dynamic is the one where he's sliding on the ground and he has both feet on the ground standing up. He can then press forward to slide into silent which is the one where he puts a hand on the ground. That's silent. And then from silent, he can tap it down and he does this spin towards the ground and looks up at the opponent. And that's the new stance. This is uh, called limited entry. So it's dynamic entry, silent entry and limited entry. And some moves will go into these stances um, and like bypass the sequence. So it's not like you have to do one stance and then the other every time but it's a common thing that you kind of do dynamic, then a move and then into silent and, and so on. Um, let's start uh, by talking about um, dynamic. I think that's a good place to start. So this is the gap closing stance. This is how you like, you know, slide in with Lars when you want to start stuff. 
He can do sort of a hobo wave dash with this by tapping down and canceling the stance. I have apparently forgotten how to do that now, but you know, it's a thing. Um, not very useful, but it's a cool little flex that you can do. Um, they've made the stance amazing. So you have a new move here that I think is the start of the show and really one of the best moves that Lars has now. It's Dynamic 3. Dynamic 3 is, it basically has all the properties. It's mid, it's a homing move, it's plus on block. I can show you here by making um, Kazia block this. You can see that it's plus three on block and then you slide into silent off of it. Um, plus three with silent is, is good, by the way. So that's amazing. And it's also a heat engager. So this move, as long as it doesn't completely whiff, which is kind of hard to do because it's got massive range, it can only do good things for you. I guess you can also be like interrupted because it's 22 frames to impact, but it's just like one of the most versatile and amazing tools in the game, right? It's just so good. So um, when you uh, get this blocked and go into silent with plus three, you have silent uh, one, which is a 12 frame, very powerful safe on block, knockdown, heat engaging mid. And because you're plus three off of this on block, that means that they cannot interrupt silent one after it becomes completely uninterruptible. And so this is genuinely a very, very powerful pressure tool, even when the opponent blocks it. It means that you have a very powerful uh, mid that you can throw from far out and it just gives dynamic teeth, finally. Amazing. So your opponent is obviously going to uh, worry about this move and they're not gonna wanna duck when you're in dynamic because they're gonna get hit by it. Uh, and that means that it unlocks mix-up potential and you have two mix-up lows from the stance as well. You've got the dynamic one plus two, which is a new move, a sort of stomp for him. It's minus uh, three on hit, so you can't really pressure after it, I guess. But if you get a counter hit, you can slide into silent and get a silent one guaranteed for a 43, da 43 damage mini combo. Um which gives you a uh, guaranteed heat engage. Uh, you can tell right here on hit, if you do slide into silent, that's another situation where you can get plus four. And because the um, silent one is so fast, that's also uninterruptible. So this right here is like uninterruptible offense. It's, it's very, very powerful. Like dynamic is super good now. So this stomp is cool. You can also use it for Oki. Obviously, you know, you knock your opponent down and away and you slide in with this and you step on them, right? The other one is the four plus on one, uh, plus one on hit. Um, so a little bit of advantage, we, which you can use to trick people. In the last trailer, they showed this into uh, back four and Jack did a 15 frame move. Back four is also 15, but because of the plus one, Lars scored a counter hit. So they're kind of saying, you know, use this to set up cheeky counter hits with Lars. Maybe this 10 frame, you know, would be amazing. So you can do that as well. But yeah, so dynamic is like a seriously good mix-up stance now. And when you're out here, you can slide in really quite fast and then do dangerous things right away. And I think this is one of the reasons Stars was bad in the past, but it's much better now because they locked all the powers into combos and stances that you don't access on the fly really fast and easily. And so he had to get to his good stuff, whereas now he can just do his good stuff, uh, which is really cool. Other dynamic moves, this is one plus two. It's a very fast, uh, high, uh, normal hit launcher. I don't personally use this a lot in my repertoire. It can be used as a spin moving combos. Some people like it, but it's just like a way of really quickly getting something dangerous out that um, your opponent has to worry about if they like to like interrupt or, or try and stuff your stance on the way in. So that's pretty cool. So you have this, you have the four option, which is the low, the three plus four option, which is the stomp. You have one, two. This is another like staple for Lars, very fast. The one, two is natural and a heat engager, which is great. But the one by itself you can do and then uh, slide into silent off of this. It's also uh, a very important tool for like combos and wall carry and stuff. So a very cool little stance. And now uh, with silent, here you have um, another powerful low mid mix up. The low is the two, which is uh, relatively fast, can't be seen, and is a full counter hit launcher, which is just kind of fantastic. 
you know it spins on the first hit but it's lars so you still get a, a lot of really good damage that's cool um and then the mid is the one that we mentioned earlier super fast heat engaging they've made it better on block to where it's just minus six now so it's really quite safe and you can just throw it a lot but the old down forward one that he used to have from the stands is just completely gone now and you don't have that they've also nerfed the four this is a, an armored homing move that used to be a normal hit launcher in the past it doesn't really do anything even on counter hit anymore but all that means is that you know if you really need armor from the stands for some reason you can use it but really just keep it to like silent one and silent two you know nice and simple and you won't really have any problems one plus two is a new move from silent it's the main spin move of the character for combos and it's very solid for that it's reliable it does good damage it's a you know a 14 frame knockdown safe on block mid for lars so it is decent from the stands but it's just like you're gonna be using the one for the most part because it's just so good right um, but yeah, very simple and easy to understand mix-up. It's a one and a two, right? And then the new stance limited, which is this one right here, uh, you also only really worry about two moves and it's also one and two. So limited one is this uh, plus four uh, low. It's minus 12 on block, I'm pretty sure, and uh, 16 frames to impact. And then the two is this jumping thing right here. Also 16 frames to impact and completely safe on block. Very powerful knockdown mid that like crushes a bunch of stuff, right? So this is very, very good. Um, and I'm going to explain why that's good by transitioning from talking about stances now to talking about Lars's block punishment. And it's going to make sense um, in a little bit. So another thing that made Lars uh, poor in, in 7, in my opinion, is that he had... Um, good block punishment for everything except standing 10 frames really and standing 10 frames in my opinion is the most important punisher that you have because it's the one you get to apply in tekken good players don't do unsafe moves all that much but if they do them they tend to do minus 10 11 moves because they might get away with it um, and even if they don't get away with it the punish that they will eat is not that massive so having a good 10 frame is something you can really capitalize on well, Lars has a completely new 10 frame block punisher in this game, and luckily it's amazing. He gets 22 damage, which is sort of standard now in Tekken 8. You get 22, 23 damage, and then a stance mix up for 10. So, you know, uh, punishment has been power crept. Uh, so, no, it's just good. But then he jumps up in the air, right? And he lands directly into limited entry. Uh, first of all, this 2-1 by itself is safe on block at minus 6. You can just do it. If you don't get the hit, you can just block and you're fine. If you do get the hit, you're plus 8. And then, like I said, the two moves that you have from limited, the 1 and the 2, are both uh, 16 frames to impact, which means that this is a completely uninterruptible mix-up for Lars. And it makes the 2-1 just one of his staples and best tools. And it's one of the reasons I'm telling you that I think Lars is a very good character for you to start with learning about how mix-ups function in this game. Because you can block something or just get a hit with this. And then you can know that there's nothing your opponent can do here except eat this mix-up. You know, they can't at least counter hit or interrupt you. So all you have to do is, I guess, is it going to be the, the low or the mid? The opponent has to guess. And if you guess right, you get to deal a bunch of damage. And... Should they uh, stay blocking and you do the mid, the mid is safe on block at minus nine, which is just, I mean, really fantastic. Just makes this whole sequence so much better and so good. And then the low, I think, is only like minus uh, 12. Yeah, so it's a very low risk, very easy to apply, super strong little mix up. So limited entry is a cool stance. And it's also like something that becomes emphasized when you activate Lars's heat. Uh, which we're going to talk about uh, later but limited entry is great but dynamic is also great and silent is also great so you have strong mix-ups from all three stances now and it just means that lars isn't like you know trying to get to his good stuff anymore which is it's is so good for him mm. now that we're talking about punishment we might as well finish that section so 10 frames standing the 2-1 is your go-to and it's amazing 12 you have a classic 4 2 4 32 damage knockdown kind of standard in this game still use it for hop kicks and stuff really quite good and unique thing about lars is that you have 
a 14 frame launcher, which like, why wouldn't you? And uh, if you are new to this franchise, 14 frame launchers basically don't exist. Most fast launchers are 15 frames at the fastest. 14 is, is rare. It only appears on a couple of characters in the roster. Um, and the fact that he has one that is this good is just kind of crazy. However, the input is forward back to one, which is a little bit awkward. And you kind of have to practice getting good at applying this for a whiff punish and a block punish. So a good way to play Lars is like, if you learn your frame data and you know what minus 14 moves your opponent might use, you can see that move and think, oh, I'm gonna block this and then I get to do like my massive launch combo, right? And if you're able to do that, congrats, you're, you're a more advanced Lars players than most because this is a little bit finicky for people and they tend to neglect it even though it is like one of the most powerful things he can do. For 15, you have like his signature move, I guess, as a character, Arc Blast. I've never been a huge fan of Arc Blast because it's it's mid, it's got decent range and damage. Um, it's cool that he has lightning powers like his dad, Heihachi, you know. But it's unsafe on block at minus 13, and uh, Asuka basically has a safe version of this. And it's just like a move that she has, so you know. Lars' the signature move is completely overshadowed by a safe version on like some schoolgirl character. So it makes Arc Blast feel a little bit less satisfying in my opinion. But it's uh, something that you use specifically, I think, after sidestepping with Lars. Uh, sidestep Arc Blast is like a classic thing. Unfortunately, in this game and in, 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 and in previous games, the combo that you have to do after Arc Blast is unnecessarily awkward in my opinion. But I'm going to show you um, when we do combos a little bit later. And then for 16, you have a uh, Lightning Screw. This is uh, my preferred option for whiff punishment with Lars because it's got good range, as you can tell here. It's a mid to long range whiff punisher. 16 frames is, is fast and, and useful for whiff punishment. Uh, and while it doesn't do as high damage as some of the other launchers, it's just like, I think by far the best option you have for whiff punishing with a launcher. For pushback moves, you have one of the longest hitting, uh, longest hitting moves in the game which is back 3-4. This is natural knockdown wall splat. It's 17, and like I said in the last guide, if you watch that, in Tekken, they tend to put a lot of good pushback moves at minus 16, and then they make all the intended punishers 17 frames to impact so that the pushback moves become easy to abuse because they want some pushback moves, like, you know, in the last game, Heihachi 4-4-2, to be easy to abuse. But you can use this successfully for a bunch of very powerful uh, pushback moves. Keep it in mind definitely when you're like, you know, blocking the last hit of uh, Paul's uh, Demolition Man, by the way. At the wall becomes one of your best uh, wall splatting tools because you will be here, right? And you're like, you know, back dashing and baiting stuff. And then when you think your opponent's going to do something, you do this and you get a big wall splat. Um, the second hit is high and duckable and good uh, good players do duck this so you have to be careful and not apply it obviously just do it when you're supposed to preferably when you've already seen the whiff so that's it for standing punishment pretty much she has some other stuff but let's leave it there for while standing the while standing for 11 frames is kind of standard plus 5 16 damage for 13 you have the old classic uh, while standing 2 1 for 30 damage uh, the two by itself can be uh, stands transitioned. If you press down, he goes into dynamic, but backwards instead of forwards. It looks cool and flashy when you do this, but I don't think it's all that useful. Uh, I mean, it can be, but it's just like mostly for show. Uh, if you tap forward, you can go into silent though and get plus six. And as we've discussed, as long as you have like, you know, plus two, three or more, silent is very dangerous, so that's good. But the extension is 30 damage. Then you have a completely new option here, which is the optimal 13 for Lars now, while standing 2-3. And as you can tell, this gives you 33 damage, and you can tap down to go into a limited with plus 6, which again makes the limited mix-up of limited 1 and 2 uninterruptible. So I would say the best 13 uh, frame while standing Punisher for the most part is now going to be while standing 2-3 and then limited mix. It's like the highest potential yield, I think, which is really cool. And then for 15, you have a uh, standard while standing launcher. It's while standing one. The combo is a little bit awkward, but it's 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 consistent. It works. Uh, you do a lightning screw like that. Uh, let's see here. 
like this and then you spin and you can get good damage it also has this option of sliding like under the opponent and uh, you don't always want to do that but you you can you know if your back is to the wall for example and if you're just on like a giant stage like this you know maybe you just do it because it's easier to get good damage that way I'll mention another while standing move that they've given you just because I don't have anywhere else to put it really, but this is while standing three. This is a plus on block um, while standing high that is actually a normal hit launcher. So, you know, you can duck in your opponent's face and throw this. If they block, good. If it hits, even better. To be able to combo with it though, you have to tap down to go into limited and then do a limited two, which is a spin move. And you get this little sequence here. Um, but it's two hits and you're already doing 44 damage. So it's kind of like a cool, powerful, crazy move that he has as well. But that is Lars' uh, punishment. Now, I want to show you some combos and then we're going to talk about like some stance transition moves and how you access some of your mix-ups. We've talked about a lot already, but while standing two is a classic tool, down back two, I guess we're doing it now. While standing two, down back two is a very low hitting mid. You can go into silent with forward for plus six. Back three is another one, you know, massive range. You can go in plus 11. So this is just really great. And it has that, you know, extension for that long range punisher. So those are some of the main ways. The four, two, one uh, forward and the forward one, two forward are like old classic Lars tools that I've never really found myself using all that much. If I want to do like a, a 12 or a 13 frame move, I probably have something better I can do. I guess the main recommendation here would be specifically forward one, two, forward. Or sorry, forward. Uh, yeah, the forward one, two, forward, because it's 13 frames to impact a natural. So you can get this as sort of a 13 frame block punisher and get 21 damage and a mix from silent, which might be cool. But, you know, a bunch of your moves transition into these different stances in general. If you get the hit before you get into the stance, you can now mix very powerfully and you should go for your fastest option for the most part. Um, and if you get blocked, maybe you uh, chill a little bit because your opponent can counter hit or interrupt you. But there are exceptions to that rule. Uh, like for example, this amazing dynamic three, because that will give you the mix from um, silent, even if the opponent blocks the move, right? So those are the real like stars of the show. But yeah, so you can sort of see the, the gameplay come together. With Lars, you're kind of uh, limited in terms of your like standard moves, but you're trying to get to that powerful like mixing opportunity from stance, uh, force a mistake, get uh, a launch, and then just do a bunch of damage with your powerful combos, right? So he's, he's kind of leaning a little bit towards defense, but not really because, you know, um, he also can really just pressure a lot and, and zoom zoom. Just a very, very uh, all-around character. All right, for combos, um, the standard one, and let's talk about your launchers first. You have the Arc Blast, you have the forward, um, forward back to one like we've mentioned. You have the Lightning Screw. You also have an Orbital with Lars, which is a key move of his. Long range, safe on block, low crush, obviously, one of his most like powerful high damage launchers. Very, very good. You also have a Counter Hit Down Back 4, which you do launch with quite a bit counter hit uh, full crouch down four two which is this thing uh, and i think those are uh, pretty much the main options i mean from silent you have silent three which is a minus 14 um, mid that you can use if you're very confident your opponent's going to try and duck your uh, silent mix-up you can do this and then you get a full combo which is of course great um while standing one is there and the uh, counter hit of course four four uh, one plus two but with lars uh, generally if you look at the um orbital here it's going to look something like this and then you have like a bunch of options for enders so you're doing dynamic two to float them and then this string right here is uh, forward one two three forward and that puts you in dynamic then you do a dynamic one to float them again and then you can do back three silent and uh, your silent one plus two is the spin move right and then for enders you can do uh, for maximum damage for the most part. He has this new thing, which is uh, dynamic two tap up forward and then press the four. Uh, and if you do that, 
he will do this like attack throw that has a lightning strike on it and it does a, a, a huge chunk of damage so it's it's usually your your optimal option for damage unless you're specifically looking for the wall in some uh, combos where you have a bunch of hits um, you won't be able to connect with it and then your best option becomes use a, a move to get into silent like back three and do silent three plus four this is Hurricane Axe, like a classic Lars move from Tekken 7. Uh, plus minus zero is, is very good uh, because, you know, this is mid-mid. Uh, um, so it's another potentially really good mixing tool, really, from Silent. But it's also like, um, also has that lightning strike and does extra damage for an ender, but not as much damage as uh, the uh, option I showed you earlier. So you can see you can use it like this and i mean it's cool looking it's easy to do it's high damage you know just a fun character especially for for new players i think uh what an awesome character right uh the combo offer arc blast i mentioned is awkward because with this you want to do down forward three hold down forward which puts you into dynamic and then do dynamic two but this has to happen very, very fast. And it basically means that it's inconsistent unless you mash. And like having to mash things out really quickly is not that satisfying in this game. You can just do a down back two and go straight into something like this, but you do lose a bunch of damage for doing that. So not really recommended. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's what the standard combo looks like. You can tell that I do like pretty much the exact same thing off of um, the 4 forward 1 plus 2 right here. You do have a, a standard spin move or two standard spin moves that are in stance locked in the shape of back 2 3 and down back 2 3. And if you know you're trying to do some sort of conversion or you just need a spin move and you don't want to like do stance stuff, maybe because the wall is in the mix, these options are here and they become good, specifically the back 2 3 when you're at the wall. So let's uh, show you some wall stuff with Lars. So, if I splat my opponent after I've already used my spin, so say for example I'm comboing over to the wall and then I put my opponent on the wall but my spin has already been used up. For Lars, the standard wall combo has always looked like this. This is uh, down forward one, down back two, one, shoulder. And shoulder is forward one plus four, which can be an awkward input to do, specifically on pad, which is why I have it bound to a shoulder button. I have this on my uh, L2 uh, when I play Lars. So I can always get this out fast without having to change my grip. If you're playing stick, you won't have that issue probably. This can be a little bit inconsistent sometimes, but it's, you know, it usually works. You get a feel for it after a couple of years and it just does very good damage. Now, if you have access to your spin still, or let's, let's just say that you wanna do a very, very easy wall combo because you're new to this game, you can actually just do this string uh, which is like forward four. I think it's one, two, one plus two. I just press uh, forward four and then press one plus two three times to get it out. It's consistent, it's decent damage, if not optimal, and it's just, you know, very, very easy to do. But if you still have access to your spin, you splat, you spin, I think with back two three being your best option, and then you can do this string and you get high good damage, consistent and really nice. However, you also have this very cool option, which is Lars has a running throw, which is running uh, two plus four. So in this game, because they've made that easier to do, you can now do these awesome combos where you do this throw and then get a free shoulder afterwards. And it's very consistent. This is like one of the most consistent like wall combos in the game. It works like all angles. So you can splat like this, then spin, then do this throw and then do the shoulder and now you're looking at like really massive damage this is probably going to be optimal for lars for the most part and obviously if you're like out here you put your opponent on the wall with some sort of wall carry tool you can still run in and you can still get the throw into shoulder so very cool very powerful options uh main wall splatting tools will be things like you know i think back three four is really the star right here obviously four two four 12 frames really fast um so you have a, a couple of cool options for that as well so the wall uh, stuff is, is really solid, I think. Now let's get to a very important section, uh, which is your heat section. And I wanted to place it last because now when you know kind of how Lars functions and what he can do, why the heat is powerful will make more sense, right? 
Um, your heat engagers, uh, first of all, 1-1-1, one, 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 natural and counter hit, so very good. Silent 1, safe on block, very fast mid, so just absolutely fantastic. Dynamic 3, one of the best moves in the entire game. Um, so your heat engagers are just really quite good, right? Uh, and then when you're in heat, what is Lars's gimmick? Well, limited entry, this little stance that I've showed you right here, becomes more powerful. Um, I'm going to mention now when we talk about limited entry as well, because I think I might have forgotten it earlier that you do have access to your wild uh, standing or full crouch move list when you go into limited. You can just hold down and he will stay in crouch and you can do crouching stuff. And as long as you're not doing one or two right away, because those are the two inputs that are mapped to limited entry attacks, you can access the moves right away. So two one into this down one plus two right here, you can just mash out and it's really quite good, right? For full crouch, you have um, full crouch down one plus two, tie your shoes, same as Elisa, really great. And then for mix up tools for mids, you've got, you know, the great punishers and transitioning tools I've showed you earlier, the wild standing for standard, you've got a launcher, you've got, you know, this thing, and the full crouch down forward to safe on block counter hit tool. So I think full crouch is good for the character and going into limited and then just, you know, doing full crouch is not a bad idea at all. So let's just mention that. Now, uh, back to heat. So, like I said, the main thing that happens is limited becomes more powerful. So if we go into limited with heat, you can see that the one is going in uh, to uh, an attack throw that I refer to as the bird, but it's just a natural big hit for 35 damage and he flies into the sky. So very scary, obviously. And for the, the mix up tool, so the limited two, it actually turns that uh, into a full launcher and you can get this combo for example that's what i do off of it anyway it spins on the first hit so you're a little bit limited in terms of long combos but it's just i mean you can tell how powerful it is the low becomes terrifying the mid becomes a launcher even more terrifying so you want to get into limited when you have access to heat with lars uh, but limited is um, not always easy to get into. If you get the 2-1, uh, you, I mean, you're there right away, you know, after a punish and you can do what you want to. But if you want quick access to it, they give you an option. Kind of like they do for Elisa again, by giving you a new move, one of the best pressure tools that have, has ever existed in Tekken. It's known as Rebellion, and it looks like this. Um, so what Rebellion does is Lars kind of um, gets a lightning shield around him, armor, uh jumps in and just pushes the opponent uh giving himself a bunch of advantage and putting himself into silent so not limited but silent so what does that do it well it means that first of all at almost any range you can just throw this out get plus uh 10 and then right away do a completely uninterruptible silent mix so you're mixing the silent two with the silent one mainly right or maybe I'm gonna start trying uh, silent three plus four here. It might be really cool hurricane axe mixing might be juicy So you have that option. So your opponent's gonna hesitate. They don't want to swing right away Remember the silent uh, two is still a, a very powerful counter hit launcher, right? And you're gonna get a uh, combo for swinging into this What you can do then if you want to is you can tap down from silent uh, and that allows you, we should do it after Rebellion, just to be clear. So you do Rebellion, and then you tap down. Sorry. You do Rebellion, then you tap down, and now you have access to that super powerful limited mix. So it's really quite straightforward. Um, you get souped up limited entry, and you get access to the Rebellion move. If you just, you know, want to do something quickly and kill the opponent with your heat with Lars, my recommended, uh, recommended option would really be do rebellion into silent mids or do rebellion into the silent low just yeah i mean you can just mash this out and be like completely safe and just mix them with this terrifying mix up or you know if you want to get um a little bit more tricksy cascade that into limited and then mix from there and get a, really an even more powerful mix up uh, for that and then obviously you still have a heat crash that you can use if you just want to you know blow your heat on some sort of a uh, big uh, damage option 50 damages on the higher side i think for heat crashes you know some characters get like 45 ish um so uh really quite decent uh not bad at all
uh, fast uh, activation, long range, and the dynamic transition on it as well. So, yeah, I think the heat is, is kind of straightforward. So, yeah, what have, have we uh, learned so far with Lars, right? So you have a pretty limited sort of standard power move list when you're not doing anything. But when you get into your stances, it becomes really quite powerful. Sorry, I forgot to mention that you have this new down four too, by the way, which is another very powerful silent transitioner. It's important. I should have mentioned this. It's good for some combos as well. It can be a really quite decent. Uh, when it counter hits, it's uh, a knockdown move and you can hold back and you don't go into silent. Sorry, I forgot to stick that in a different section. But you're trying to use tools like that to get into your powerful stances. And no matter what stance it is, your opponent always has to worry about powerful mix-ups, right? You want to launch your opponent because your combos are so huge. You can carry really far. If you get them in, into corners or at the wall, your wall package is really strong as well. And then at some point during pretty much every round, you should activate your heat. If you're on defense, use your default engager to get them off you and then start forcing rebellion mix up so rebellion silent or rebellion limited right away um or you know just um hang on to the heat see if you can get a 2-1 access the mix up that way or when the heat is starting to run out see if you can pace them with a powerful heat crash uh, and get a bunch of damage that way so that you don't waste your one heat opportunity that you have every round and i think it's a general tip that i want to give people even though heat doesn't feel great for some characters i think it's done well for some and not for others you do have access to it once every single round you play, and if you never touch the button, um, you just lose out on so much potential power. It's like bad resource management, and it's a mistake that I was making early in, in Tekken 8. It's still ter early in Tekken 8, but I was making a lot in the first few days because I just wasn't a big fan of the mechanic. I don't know um, if I am still, but you know, you should be using it because it is, it is you know, uh, at least ambiguously useful no matter what character you play all right i think that might be it for what i wanted to say about uh lars don't know how long we've been going for but i i hope it was uh, uh easy to understand and digest i know it's a lot of information i know especially if you're new because we're speaking the language of tech and we're talking about notations like down forward to and we're talking about you know uh, knockdown plus on block and stuff like this but um, instead of going to like an encyclopedia, if you keep watching videos like this, you will eventually like understand how it all comes together. You will understand the frame data. You hear me say, oh, this is plus six and this move is, is uh, you know, 15 frames, which means that it's uninterruptible. That's going to click eventually. That's how I learn. So it's not a, a bad idea to consume this kind of content, even if you're not you know, entirely uh, up to date with, with terminology and stuff like that. But yeah, try out Lars, you know, easy to use, intuitive, high power, solid beginner character, um, kind of underexplored, you know, not, not that many Larses out there. So it's cool that, you know, he's getting a, a bit more attention this time around. Um, and, you know, let me know if you have any success with him. Uh, thank you for watching the guide and I'll see you guys again very soon.